Hey everybody, Tom here, and today I am finally going to start playing Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon. I am going to be playing Chapter 1 of this big campaign -y, scenario based game that I cannot even express how excited I am about this. So before we start this video, I do need to go over a couple of things uh, with all of us. <laughs> some changes I've made to the gameplay, some storage solution, and uh, where we are. So this is video five in a series of videos. So just to recap, video number one is where I unbox the game, I sorted out all of the cards and I talk about the different types of cards, and then I restored everything with some dividers that I've created and some boxes that I've created. So if you're interested in learning about these boxes, for example, or dividers that you might see in this video, you can go check out video number one or go check out my website at tomteachesgames.com where you can have access to download those for free and learn how to make them and whatever. Video number two is a video in which I taught you how to set up most games I kind of go over it the long way and um, I set up the introductory scenario and yeah teach about that there. Video number three I play the introductory scenario and I teach the rules of the game as I'm doing the introductory scenario. I say that because if you don't know anything about this game you need to start in those earlier videos. You don't have to start necessarily in video number one uh, but at the very least probably start with video three if you want to see the game played and understand the setting and all of that stuff. Video number four is where I set up this scenario. So I kind of just take you through especially the changes between the introductory scenario and the, and the actual scenario. And then here we are, we're ready to play chapter one. So that's where we are. Um, just a couple of other things that I want to say. Um, I'm going to be playing Bjor to start off. Throughout this campaign, it's possible that I might bring in a second character, but I don't feel like I'm quite ready to handle that right now on my own while recording. It's that it overwhelms me, honestly. Um, every interaction that I'm having with this game, aside from me reading the rule book, basically, I've put on camera. So you, if, if you're watching these videos, you're going to experience this game through my eyes. So with that in mind, a uh, couple of caveats there. Number one, do not spoil things for me. I can't think, like, I realize I'm spoiling things for you, maybe, but at least I've warned you. Um, do not put spoilers in the comments, please. Uh, number two, I'm, uh, this is a story heavy game. There's a lot of reading. And a weakness of mine is I really struggle reading out loud. And it's something I'm a little bit self-conscious about. Um, I've been called out on it in like my Gloomhaven series, for example. Um, and so, I, I don't mind being called out. I, if I'm getting something wrong, you can tell me. I will receive it better if it's preceded with saying something nice. And then also, there are ways to correct me without being unkind about it. So again, you are experiencing this through my eyes. This is the first time I've actually really played the game beyond the introductory scenario, which was pre-scripted. So I'm going to make mistakes, and I'll do my best to annotate, uh, keep the Klingon subtitles on, stuff like that. But along those lines, there are really weird words in here that I will not know how to pronounce and I'm just going to make my best guess at it. So I'm just asking that we all be civil. I am excited about this experience. I don't really want it to be ruined um, through unkindness is essentially what I'm asking. The last thing that I'm going to say is that this game is kind of known for its huge, beautiful miniatures. Like, look at this thing. This is crazy. And I love them, and I've paid to get them uh, painted. Like, the, that was an option, is that you could have them pre-painted uh, with this beautiful wash, and oh my gosh, I love it. Technically, this should be on the map right here, right now, with a dial inside of it. I did that for the introductory video. I love those miniatures, and if I was just sitting down at the table, I would play it the way it's supposed to be played. But I felt like two problems with that. Number one, the miniatures as the camera was facing down were kind of bleed, like they were bleeding into the map. You couldn't see them very easily. But not only could you not see them, they were blocking so much important information on the cards. And so I have made the decision to not put these on the map to make it a better experience for the viewer. And so when I use these dice, that is representing the miniature with the dial inside. And so there's that. And then similarly, 
here's our character. Here's Bjor right here. Uh, it was really hard to see him as he was moving around the map top down. At least as I was editing, that's how I felt. And so I have just added this blue paper, hopefully so that it's easier to spot as we are looking. Okay, wow, that was a lot of babbling. I apologize for that. Um, but we are just about ready to start. Before we start, start, or maybe you already know how the game is played and you're jumping into this video to watch my campaign, uh, just wanted to quickly remind us of um, my character here. This is, I think, Bjor. And he is an apprentice, if I remember correctly, to a blacksmith in the town of Quanacht, or Quanacht. I don't know how to pronounce it. I think Quanacht sounds cooler. I just don't know if that's how it's intended. But something worth knowing, because I think this is going to come up a bunch, is let's read this. Um, again, I've read this several times, but if you're jumping in right now, here we go. He's a local smith, known for his short temper and incredible strength. He does his best to conceal a festering, unhealable wound in his side that he received under mysterious circumstances. We don't know what those circumstances are. We did read a dream in the uh, introductory scenario that maybe kind of gives us a hint. Uh, anyway, so yeah, there was that going on there. And essentially, in the introductory scenario, Bjor woke up. He uh, There was a crash, maybe like a meteorite or something like that, that had crashed in the next town over. So his uh, master sent him to go talk to the tanner up there and said, hey, go check this thing out. He went up there um, and then ended up coming back. And when he came back, his master and five other big hero masters, or I guess four other, five altogether, masters have all left and those were the masters of the of the all the characters in the game. So you can play like these apprentices. Um, anyway, so all of the masters have left town. They've gone to Camelot, spelled with a K, in order to um, fight some big darkness that's been coming. And so that's right where the introductory game left off. And it left off with Bjor receiving a letter from his master that we are going to read now. Again. I don't read on camera super great. I'm going to do the very, very best that I can. Bear with me. Here we go. So his letter says, Bjor, you were always a good lad uh, with and a great help. I would have closed the forge long ago if not for the strength of your arms and your resolve. I feel I owe you something. When I told you to stay in Kuanacht uh, to keep an eye on my property, I misguided you. The forge is already lost, just like the rest of our land. The saga of old, sorry, the, so, the sagas, is that, I think that's what that says, of old are true. Our island once belonged to twisted, immoral, immortal, <laughs> maybe they were immoral, immortal powers. It was not a place for humans, but Arthur, the first of the kings, uh, who landed on these shores with our people, subdued Avalon inch by inch. He took the grail from the four dwellers uh, and used it to bring seasons and cycles known from our world into this godless place. We all thought the men here, those are the big statues, men here are the big statues, uh, in our village uh, was raised to immortalize this. The truth is, it was created to keep these ancient powers at bay. Now, the men here go dark. Something is broken. Spring will not come. The animals won't breed. Lord um, Yvain, yeah, yeah, I don't know, secretly gathered the five strongest and wisest people of Kuanacht, maybe, including me. He leads us east to seek help in Camelot before it's too late, before the lands start sinking into the, I think this word is pronounced weirdness. I, my best guess is the synonym is like darkness. Things are kind of going dark and they keep using the word weirdness for that. So I think that's what that word is. If we don't return, it means we have failed, and the fate of Kuanacht falls to you. Uh, Yvain didn't want you with us due to your lack of experience and short temper. <laughs> yeah, um, I feel that I'm a teacher right now, and it was a rough day today, I gotta tell you. But I've always believed in you, lad. Save our people, or if you cannot, try to save yourself. And his master was um, Erfur, uh, forge master of Kuanacht. All right, so that is the letter that we have. We were also given this map that we may consult once in a while. This is where we are starting right here. And I think we can kind of see uh, there are different men here's 
again, I don't know how to pronounce those things, so forgive me. Um, yeah, but we are definitely starting here in this spot. Uh, Camelot was on the map. Oh, it's right over there. Um, I'm not sure if we're really supposed to be heading that way or not. We'll find out. Um, but yeah, so we have this map that we can consult from time to time, and I'm sure that we will. So up here I have our encounters deck, and I have a stack of event cards. And the reason I point that out is we also have this setup card, and the setup card, kind of the last part of setup is we are now ready to start chapter one. As your first action of the game, try exploring your starting location. So we're gonna definitely do that. Um, and also, oh yeah, so, uh, and then it says, remember to read the introduction of the exploration journal before you explore for the first time. So we'll, we'll do that for sure too. And then it says, now discard this card and reveal the top card of the event deck. So let's read the introduction in just a quick second, but first, um, before we explore, right? But first, let's read the event. And off camera, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of Googling because the first thought coming to my mind, and again, I am experiencing this game brand new. Here we go. The first thing that comes to my mind is, I know at the beginning of the day, we're gonna reveal an event. So my question is, does this count as the event for the day or not? My guess is no, because of a thing I'm gonna show you in just a quick second. But, so I'm guessing that we're gonna have two events revealed. I could totally be wrong. If you have a final answer on that, let me know. Like I said, I'll, I'll search, um, I'll Google, I'll search boardgamegeek.com and, and let's see. But for now, here we go. Event, chapter one, uh, part one. It says, place this card on top of the active quest pile. The time is short. The guardian men here that has been protecting your town since the ancient days is about to go dark. Rumor has it that there's a secret um, druidic ritual that may help you rekindle the men here. You must explore the location surrounding the Kuanok to find it. Quest. Earn a men here rights secret card. To do so, you will have to explore the locations surrounding Kuanok. So I don't think we're gonna be going too far, which is probably good for our first chapter. Success, as soon as you have this thing, then we'll resolve a card. Okay, so I don't, let's not focus on that until we actually succeed. And then it says, hint, if this is your first game, try to return to Kuanok at the end of this day and spend a night there to read the dream as dreams often contain hints, okay? And this thing over here, for better or worse, this is called ancient knowledge and it has this lock symbol here. All right, so uh, let's see, where should I put my ancient quest, or my active quest? I guess this will be like a discard over here, and this will be my active quests here. All right, so here we are. We're at the Kuanok farmhold, and uh, again, this die represents the men here. It's right here next to this big statue, and we've got all of these little houses. This art is just killer. I love it so much. Um, just wanted to point out a couple of things. If we end the day here, we're gonna have a dream if, uh, oh, this is like friendly territory, so this card means that people here are friendly with us, so um, not any scary encounters necessarily. And this icon right here means that there's a men here, here, uh, that's activatable. Now, again, imagine this big statue standing here. I kind of said this in the introductory game. The idea is that's kind of like a light as to what we can see and experience. And so basically the nine cards surrounding those statues are visible. If we wanna go beyond those nine cards, we're gonna to have to find other statues there. So uh, I was talking about the event cards and here's what I was referring to. We're gonna start the day right now. At the start of the day, we need to remove any expired men here's and discard locations that are out of the men here's range. And so if this thing was to go all the way down to zero, then what we would do is we would remove the statue and all of the places surrounding it that don't have other statues nearby, they would also get removed, but we're good for now. But then the next thing is that we'd reduce all of the time and, and uh, men here dials. So there's gonna be time tokens and we would tick those down, but here we're also gonna tick down the dial. And you do do this on the first round. That's something that we learn in the rule book and I think the introductory scenario. So we actually do tick this down to a seven which is why I think we do also draw another card. Just because they do tell us to set that at eight in a solo game and we do take it down into the very beginning. They don't just say start it at seven. So I'm guessing uh, that's the case, but um, open to suggestions. And just a quick Googling, it looks for the most part like people agree with me even if people haven't been doing that. But yeah, sure, let me know. That's something I'm definitely curious about if you know better than I do. 
So next, we're going to reveal the next event card. So chapter one, part two, and I need to remember that this is the thing. I'm trying to get a secret card that says the men here writes. So part two, Exodus. Homeless vagabonds roam the roads and trails. Many hail from fishing villages further west where the last men here went dark weeks ago. Though mal, uh, though, sorry, though malformed and sick, they are, they are the lucky ones. Their tales chill you to the bone. Is this the fate that awaits your land? Help the refugees. Each player may spend one wealth or one food to gain one rep and one experience. You know, I have plenty of food, so I think I would like to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and spend a food, and then, uh, let's see, you would spend one wealth or one food. Let's keep that wealth here in order to gain one reputation and one experience. Next, the event says, place five minus one per player additional random events on top of the event deck. Then discard this card. So like I said, I think this is our discard pile right here. And since I am one player, five minus one is four. So I have four random events. Um, I store these in the box. I just have a nice divider there. So I have shuffled these and, uh, well, I shuffled the deck. I drew four and these are gonna go right here. Then there's a hint here that says several, or sorry, uh, there are several ways to gather food or heal around your starting location. You may need to find them though, okay? One thing that I know from the rule book is that green encounters, however I find a green encounter, that's, those are like beasts that we can, in theory, kill and get food. So I want to keep that in mind for sure. Next, um, it says we need to reveal the next event card. Well, you just did that. Move guardians. Uh, there will be guardians in this game that kind of move around uh, according to a die, but we don't have that. Next, we're going to pick an active item and secret cards, or not pick and, but we would have items in front of us and we would choose some to be active and some to be inactive. Same with the secret cards. I don't have any right now, so I don't need to worry about that. Next up, during the day, we're going to spend energy until we run out of points. And the ways you can spend energy are you can explore your location. That's what we were guided to do. Make sure we actually explore uh, the farm hold. And then it says, uh, uh, it just tells you what to do if you explore. Uh, and then also to travel. And then it tells us the traveling as you just move from one to the other. Uh, and then we could do action locations. All of these, well, most of these have an action on top of them. Uh, you can inspect a men here for free. We're definitely going to want to do that because my understanding is there's ways to keep this thing active and to get the die back up in case it gets low because we definitely don't want it to go out. And then there are going to be like character cards and secret cards. There's going to be actions on these cards or you can pass. So we were kind of guided to explore this location, but before we explore the location, we need to read out of the book. And because the book is really kind of big and awkward to hold in front of the camera, I'm going to put it on the screen just like you're seeing now. And uh, this is just coming, I'm just literally taking a picture of the page and I will just put that on the screen. And that way I can also try to censor information from the screen. Um, I'm going to do the best to censor it from my eyes as well. But here we are at the uh, page for this starting location 101. Oh, and I'm just realizing, I think that what they meant by read the introduction to the journal is there is a page uh, that talks about how to use the journal. I'm guessing that's what they're referring to. I thought maybe for sure there was like a, a thing, but there's not. So here we are. We are spending one energy to explore. And as we explore the Kuanoct farmhold, it says, a deep feeling of loss fills everything in Kuanoct from uh, dilapidated farms to the sunken eyes of those who remain in town. The men here in the market is all but extinguished and everyone brave and resourceful enough has left to find a solution. If you have the Winds of Weirdness status, remove this location card from the game and replace it with location 121. Then explore this new location for free. Okay, I don't have that, but that is probably something I'm going to want to jot down. We'll see. It says, if you have the secret card 66, go to verse 4. We don't. If you have the hunter's mark status, go to verse 6. We don't. Uh, otherwise, choose one. It says, visit the families of the champions from the first expedition. And then we're given a hint. If you're if you're to find them, knowing uh, more about them might help. Okay, go to verse 1. 
Or we can ask the townsfolk to help you prepare. Go to verse 3. We could rest for the day in your home. Go to verse 5. Or wander the alleys twisted by the weirdness. Only if the men here model is not in this location. Go to verse 9. Or we can leave and the exploration ends. Yeah, I think, I mean, to me, the obvious option here is let's start by visiting the families of the champions. So we will go to verse 1 which says, this long winter, nearly everyone here lost a friend or a family member, first to hunger, then to disease. Finally, the five remaining pillars of the community, the only heroes this land has ever known, suddenly left. Now, when you look into their the distant eyes of the last remaining residents, you realize they want to forget. We can loosen their tongues with mead, uh, there is an old custom, a late night wake for those who wander far from their homes, holding it for everyone who left with the expedition won't be cheap though. Pay one wealth or one food and go to verse two. Ask them to share their burdens. This requires, um, oh, that is an empathy thing that I do not have. I am not very empathetic, so that's not gonna happen. Uh, or, we, or, well, or we can leave and go back uh, to the start of this location and make another choice. And it, it's telling us the exploration hasn't ended yet, so we can just keep going. I think I'm going to go ahead and let's loosen their tongues with mead. I think food is the cure for everything. But I need to be careful with my food. I need to have a food at the end of the day or else I'm in big trouble. And so we are going to pay a food. I'll try to make sure that I can hunt. i got to stop giving food for now and then maybe we'll end up hunting on day two. Uh, but yeah, so I pay a food. And now we can go to verse two where it says, it takes a while to break the silence of the grief stricken people. But when you do, stories of separations and departures flood you like torrential rain. You try to remember every detail. The color of a of a palfrey horse, the village priestess, Nieti Road, the ornament of the, oh my gosh, Huau Bark. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be rough. <laughs> that the Lord um, Yvain wore the strange drinking horn. Ephrier the Smith used to lug around the birthmark, birthmark of Fail, the master huntsman. So these are all of those people that wrote letters, by the way. And again, their apprentices or whatever are the the other characters in the story. The embroidered cape of Albert, the seasoned traveler who'd seen all of the parts of the island. Who knows what detail uh, can help you down the road? Gain part one of the fate of the expedition status, and then the exploration ends. Okay, so over here I have our save sheet, and it's gonna be especially important with the statuses thing. Now, I'm kinda of probably just gonna be taking pictures of each board, eh, we'll see. Um, I don't really plan on using this side a lot, is what I'm kinda of trying to say. But at least over here, we're gonna find this fate of the expedition, and it says that we gained part one. So when we get part one, we're gonna go ahead and color that in just like that, and there will be times when verses instruct us to do stuff if we have part one, which we do. And now I need to decide what else to do. Now there was one other thing that was listed as an option to do that I think especially where I've given away so much food, I would like to do. So I'm going to explore one more time. My understanding is that's fine as far as I can tell. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend one more uh, energy. And again, if you look back here where we were exploring the location, one of the options is um, that it says you can ask the townsfolk to help you prepare. I think that they'd probably be willing to, so I do want to do that. And so we're going to go to verse 3, which says, Though they have little left, they share with you their last remaining supplies. Somehow this seems unworthy of a hero, but since all true heroes were lost, who will dare uh, to question your methods? If you have at least one reputation, which is awesome because we do um, from earlier, it says, and you don't have the um, scrounger status. I don't think we have that. Each party member gains two food, then gain one random item and the scrounger status exploration ends. Oh, okay. So we do gain two food, which is exciting. We are gonna need to gain the scrounger uh, status. I think that's the way that they're gonna keep us from you know, getting too needy. So we'll go ahead and mark that on our board. And we're also told that we gain one random item. Here's our item cards right here. Like I said, I'm keeping a lot of things in the box and these are already shuffled. So we'll just gain the top one. And it looks like somebody has given us some uh, petty trinkets. For one energy, you can gain one wealth for each point of which icon is that? Okay, that's our practicality. And discard this item 
only in settlements. So settlements, if I remember correctly, are the green icon uh, ones. Well, do you know what? I take that back. I think it could either be the green good ones or the red bad ones. They're both called settlements. So if I'm at locations with that, I can take advantage of that item. So I'm going to go ahead and hold on to that, but I'm guessing that I probably will want to get one more practicality before I get too excited about using this. But I've got it for now, which is so exciting. Now, because I'm really bad at remembering things and there's often a lot of time in between play sessions, I got myself this moleskin journal I'm really excited about. Um, and here we have chapter one. And just off camera, because it's so awkward to write on camera, I've just noted that in location 101, we could revisit it uh, with with one of those things. Those are just things worth keeping an eye out for. So I've just made a note for that in this journal. Okay, something else I'd like to do while we're here. I mean, we could do a couple of different things. We could do the chores for the townsfolk to gain some more reputation that would take an energy. I'm kind of trying to do as many things here as possible. And I kind of have two more energy to spend. I just don't want to leave. We were given the hint that we want to dream while we're here. So I'm thinking we spend day one right here at this location before we decide to go elsewhere. Something we can do for free is inspect the men here to see what we can do to uh, reactivate it. So we're going to do that and that's back in the journal. And right here there is a section for the men here that says the local men here is weathered and cracked. It requires special attention. Requires all characters. The men here writes secret card and the stone shaper's tool secret card so i guess if i can find those two secret cards and i come back it says pay two energy two health two wealth and two magic per player um and i think that would be i'm only one player but i think it's not just two magic per player it's two of all of those things per player put a new men here model on this location and set its dial to eight uh minus one per player and if there aren't enough models left, take it from another location of your choice. Hint, the men here in your hometown will be beyond your help for quite some time. Other nearby men here are easier to activate. Okay, so I've just added that here. I'm thinking, rather than calling this like chapter one, I'm guessing probably each page is going to be its own location. That's probably a better way to do this, and then it'll be really easy to find stuff, maybe? Oh, I have no idea. So I've just made a note uh, for when I want to reactivate them in here that that's the stuff that I'm going to need again, so that when I leave, I can just come back and check that out. So that was a free action. Uh, so if I remember correctly, I, I've only explored twice. Exploring the men here is free. And then I'm going to go ahead, and while I'm there, let's see if we can go ahead and help the townsfolk. That's going to get me a reputation. Again, I kind of imagine him as stepping into the spotlight unwillingly, or at least unknowingly. Ooh, do I want to do that? Ooh, yeah. I was thinking I should do this crafting thing, but I forgot that it's four energy. For four energy, I can draw three random craftable items and then pick one. I am going to want some items before I go out. Ugh, but how much time do I spend here? That's the question of the day. And I really wanted to do this again, but you can only do that once per day. I'm not sure of any other action that I would want to do. Again, I want to end right here. So it kind of sucks um, just because I want to be wise. I uh, don't think there was any other option in exploring that really caught my attention. Um, I could travel, but I don't want to travel. Uh, I could. I just did the location action, inspected for free. Okay, hmm. I mean, I could spend one energy. <laughs> Somebody gave me these petty trinkets. I could just re-gift them right then and there in the town. That would be that would be super great. I bet they'd love that. It would get me a wealth, but I just feel like that's not that's not a very nice thing to do. So you know, this might be a little silly, but I might say that's the end of the day right there, so that tomorrow I have to decide if tomorrow I just spend my four energy to craft some items before I really head out the next day. Oh man, I don't know. I don't know if I'm digging myself a grave or what. I don't see myself doing anything else necessarily. Ooh, this is a little, I don't feel great about this, but I think I might end the day right there. I think we're gonna keep it nice and simple and safe, specifically because Bjor has this weakness where if he becomes exhausted, he's gonna lose some health. And I'd really rather not do that, especially because being exhausted makes it 
tougher to rest up. So he did some really nice things today. I'm feeling positive about his actions. I think we're gonna go ahead and end the day as is. And so what that means for us is that we're gonna rest, consume one food, restore one health, and lose one terror. Uh, so, well, man, knowing that that's gonna happen, do I just, mm, no, because then I'd have to leave and come back, and leaving isn't gonna do anything. No, that's silly. No, let's just, let's just stick with it. Okay, so uh, we're gonna eat one food. That's going to restore our energy. It would move us up a health, move us down a terror, so we're good there. And then, uh, so yeah, just a reminder, you would restore your health to full. If you weren't exhausted, if you are exhausted, you go up four spaces. Uh, we can advance our character by spending experience. I only have one experience point, and it will take at least two experience points to do something. And then um, we could modify our decks if we wanted to. We're that we not right now. Uh, and if you're in a location with a dream icon, we're going to read the dream. So let's do that next. And the dream says, "In your restless dream, a pale lady rises from the water. Her eyes milky and her skin spoiled with rot." She whispers something in, into your ear. Her breath smells of sea salt, kelp, and rotten fish. You barely remember the words. There was something about three enigmas, one hidden under the Isle of the Dead, one clutched in the grasp of burned hands and arms, and one burned in a mist-covered mound. But what could it mean? Hint, the dream refers to three out of eight locations surrounding Kuanacht. It's possible some of them are not yet revealed. And then there's a nightmare section that we don't need to read because nightmare happens when your uh, terror is raised, so we won't read that part. Okay, so looking at the eight locations, it looks like we're looking for, what were the three things? Uh, something about the Isle of the Dead, and I don't know that I see that. Uh, one clutched in the grasp of burned hands and arms, and one uh, buried in a mist-covered mound. So, like, this one is likely... Is that charred burns in hand? It is charred. Hmm. Could be that one. The windlass that uh, caresses the long grass of the desolate high... Oh, okay, burnt flesh. Okay. So, probably we need to go here is one of the places. And I'm not convinced we know where the other ones are. At least not yet. Hunter's Grove, what is that? That's a big skull thing. Hmm. It's a good place to gather food, though. All right. Now, what we're going to have to do on the next day is we're going to travel either over here, would unlock these two locations, because, again, the men here is here lighting all nine of these cards. So if I go over here, if I feel ready to, uh, it looks a little scary, though. Um, yeah, we could go over here. And that would open up these. I could go over here. That would open up these or up. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Well, whatever. Uh, now we're going to start a new day. And so we need to remove any expired men here. So there aren't any. But we're going to reduce this one down to a six. I am worried about how much time I'm spending. But I want to be prepared. I was a Boy Scout, people. Um, let's reveal the next event card. Let's see. The next event card says, an unnatural chill. If you're out of a settlement when the end of the day starts, lose two health. Water freezes and grass covers the frost. Old people call it Four Dweller Curse. Okay, where should I put this? This isn't really an active thing. Wait, I'm getting this confused. Duh, I'll annotate. Maybe I should do that differently. <laughs> I don't know. Discards, active. We want to keep this in mind. I want to end my turn on a settlement. Hopefully... I have no idea. A good one. I think I'm going to do it. I do think if I have an item, it's going to help my other stuff better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend four. One, two, three, four. We're actually going to use all of our energy. We're going to craft an item before we leave. That way I'm still in a settlement for the unnatural chill. I'm going to have a good item, stuff like that. So uh, we're going to draw three random craftable items. So the way this works here, let me grab a little pile. So this is just the front of the deck, is some of these items have a little C, that one doesn't. And so I need to just draw the first three, I'll pick one, I want to find one for you that has a C on it. No, I'm really not looking at these, no, okay, no. Okay, so there's one, 
Okay, so I need three of these before I continue on. And I will pick one to keep. Wow, I thought there would be more. This is a little silly. Let me grab some more item cards. Um, okay, there's one, and there's one. All right, so let me just go ahead. I'm gonna get these shuffled. I don't even know the game well enough to kind of know what's in here, but yeah, shuffle those up. And we're gonna pick three. And I'm guessing we'll just put the other one in the bottom or reshuffle it. All right, so this one, uh, a smoke bomb. In combat, discard this item to escape without triggering an opportunity attack. I don't know that Bjorn's really a runner, but let's see. Discard this item to prevent two wounds from an attack or response. Just a little wicker shield. That's okay. And, oh, okay. So this is um, some armor. The when the bad guys attack, I can prevent one wound, but I can't. Uh, I can't bring it down to zero. So if I was going to get two wounds, I could bring it down to a one. I like that one the most because it's not a discard thing. So I do think I'm going to keep. I think I'm going to keep that one. Yeah, and you'll see that the items have a type. You can't have more than one armor type or one shield type. Like, you can only have one of each of those. So I'm just going to go ahead and put these other craftable items in the back of the items card pile. And with that, we're going to go ahead and end the day. So uh, to end the day, just remember we need to rest. So we're going to eat one more food. Oh, come on, people, give me more food. We're going to eat a food. And that's going to help us do all of that stuff. Uh, and then we don't have enough experience yet to do that. We're not really modifying our decks. And if you're in a dream location with that icon, which we are, we've already read the dream, so I'm not going to reread it. And then start of the next day. Okay, so let's go to the next day. And this time let's get serious. So we're going down to five here. Let's read the next event. So the next event says heavy rainfall. Each travel costs an additional energy. Every creek becomes high with rain. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's not stellar. We'll try to not move around way too much, but I can't, I'm going to be slow here. I got to pick it up. And again, no guardians to move, but I would pick active items and secret cards. So of the cards that I have only one of each type. So I could flip some upside down in order to show that I'm not using them, that they're inactive, but we'll call that good for now. And I want to point out that I've only got one food. And so I've got some tough choices here. Uh, first of all, we have uh, this spot. I could pay a wealth in order to get a craftable item. And as I've pointed out, I think craftable items are going to be important. Or we can come up here to Hunter's Grove to gather some food. And then we'll draw a green encounter. Um, green encounters are ways to get more food, so maybe that's the thing to do. So to travel is going to cost an extra. I don't want to travel too far, but let's at least come up here. So I'm going to spend two energy to come up here. So that's two. And because it's within the range of the men here, we're going to go ahead and put out location 107 over here. That's the whitening. I kind of knew a little bit about that from earlier. Uh, from the introductory scenario, and then we have the four dweller mounds. So I'm guessing that these mounds are part of the dream. I remember the word mounds. So probably that one. I could explore this location, but I think we're going to gather some food. Let's do that. Let's spend our last two energy that I want to spend to gather food, and we're going to draw a green encounter and take care of that. So I'm spending two in order to gain two food, and then we're going to draw a green encounter, and we have our first encounter here on top, and so we're going to go ahead and take that one, and we are revealing, I kind of knew this already from the introductory scenario, but we just found a mist-shaped vermin. I don't know how a vermin needs to be shaped as mist, but this is the thing that we're going to be fighting. Uh, I'm semi-familiar with this because we kind of fought it in the introductory scenario, and so yes, actually this is what we're going to be fighting. Let's bring it over here. And we'll go ahead and put that right there. And let me grab my combat overview. I know this is where I'm going to make some mistakes if I haven't made any already. But these icons over here are going to be important for combat. Here's my combat deck. Here's my item that could be important for combat as well. And so when we start an encounter, we're going to go ahead and draw three cards from the deck. Two cards if you're playing with four players. So we'll just draw the top three cards. And we will take a look. 
And essentially, we're going to play cards down the way that I described in the other video. I'll kind of re-explain my choices here. But essentially, if this is my first combat on my own, I'm a little nervous. Uh, the first thing I notice is that this has a yellow icon, so I wouldn't want to play that one first, most likely. This guy has a health of 4, so if I could do 4 damage before it attacks me, that would be better. And so let's talk about the pros and cons of the other two being placed down first. So a powerful blow. I could play this one down. Right here, I do have that, so I could get two cubes and then one cube there. This would get me three cubes. But, well, goods and bads. I guess this one would, as soon as I play it, I would lose an energy. And then next time it's my turn, they would put two more wounds on there and then this thing would be dead. So that's cool. Um, or we have, uh, let's see, Crippling Strike. I could put that down and do two damage. Then I would put two charges on this, and when they attack, they would lose one less cube. Yeah, so we'd remove a charge, they'd lose one less cube, so this thing loses one cube, and then I would get a draw card. That's pretty cool. And I know that in theory I'm supposed to save this till later, and whether I do or don't, I don't know that it actually matters. Let's see. Let's look. Because this thing looks pretty powerful. Well, let's see. So I would do two cubes worth there and one cube there. So three. And then when they strike, they would heal themselves. Oh, so this is called final blow because if this isn't the final blow, it's not going to be good for me. Okay, so let's see if we can combine some stuff. I think I think we could do that. I don't really want to lose an energy if I can avoid it. I have already feel like I've wasted so much time. Let's see if we could make this work. If I put this card down here, okay, um, and again, I'm not going over, uh, I don't know, I feel conflicted, like I should explain, because this really is complicated. I'm putting this down. I have one cube here in practicality, and there's one icon here, so that would do one damage. So here, let's play this thing out. One damage, and this will always do damage. You don't need to have the specific icon, so that's, well, it's not always going to do damage, but this will always activate. Okay, when I play this down, I gain two charges, so we just put two cubes on here. And then when this guy activates, we'll remove one of the charges, he'll lose one fewer cubes than he would otherwise, and draw a card. Now, normally, this might be the end, except I do have this card. And this card can line up very nicely right here. I do have one aggression, so this is going to activate and do two more damage. I do have the one Courage, so that's why I'm allowed to play the second card. Your first card is always free. Your second card uh, needs to have this yellow icon on a matching symbol of something that you do have. And then that's going to do another damage down there. So I think we can end combat at this moment. We play our cards down. We're going to end combat. And then I believe one of these is we check for victory by comparing this number with the number of cubes just like that we were able to kill this thing so nothing nothing bad is happening to us at all so this guy won't even have a chance to attack we took him out um, I don't think I missed any keywords I should have looked closely I was just thinking of it being the first encounter um, okay so we're gonna go ahead and loot and earn one food and oh it's just barely on the screen so here I'm just gonna give myself a food for killing that thing and so at this point, I believe we just clean up all of the cards. This guy is going to go back at the bottom of the encounters deck. And all of the cards that we played down, including whatever was in our hand, is going to get shuffled into here. We don't really carry cards other than them being in this pile uh, from encounter to encounter. So I think this really was just that easy. Hmm, I don't know. Hopefully I did that right. Let's take this back. And we'll put that at the bottom. And because I really don't want to exhaust, we're going to go ahead and end the day. So ending the day, we're going to consume one food. That's going to restore this to the top. We would gain a health, lose a terror. And then uh, we don't have enough experience to spend it still. Um, we're not modifying any of our decks because we're not buying stuff. And now if we're in a location with a dream icon, we read the dream, 
that is the case here. I still haven't explored this location, so I'm not sure what this dream is going to tell me. But let's read it anyway. And our dream says, if you have part two of the morning song status, your sleep is dreamless tonight. Otherwise, read on. Well, we don't have that. You drift off under this ochre po uh, painted constellation into a restless sleep where you chase a young dove into the hills just outside uh, Quinoct. I've got to figure that out. You wake early in the morning in a cold sweat with several fresh cuts. The taste of blood fills your mouth. Beside you, raw pieces of meat lay carefully wrapped in leaves. If you don't have the hunter's mark status, each character in this location gains two food, then gain the hunter's mark. Uh, I don't know if we just went full on werewolf. <laughs> That's what it kind of reads like. <laughs> so, okay, well I just gained two food. And now we have the hunter's mark status, which means that we would not get food if we dream here again. So hunter's mark. Okay, interesting. Now we need to start the new day. I am getting very nervous. That thing is ticking down faster than I thought it would. And now we have a new event. <clears throat> it's a new threat. Draw cards from the gray encounter deck until you draw one with a guardian keyword. Put this encounter in the lowest numbered reveal location and then shuffle the, okay, wait a second. Put this encounter in the lowest numbered reveal location and then shuffle the encounter deck. If there is no guardian encounter in your gray deck, ignore this card. Other travelers, war travelers warn you of a dangerous enemy nearby. I just don't know why it says in. I wonder if that's supposed to be on. Hmm. Okay. I think that goes there. So what we're doing is we're looking for guardian. Is that right? Okay, so not that. Uh, don't see the word guardian there. I don't see that there. No guardian there. Am I doing this right? Um, from the green counter deck until you draw one with a guardian keyword. Hopefully I'm not missing it. No, I don't see one there. Try to not look too closely because I want to be like surprised. No guardian there. None there. No, I just don't see them. Okay, I may have missed it, but I don't see one, so I guess I ignore that. And then I shuffle these. Ooh, I wonder if I'm supposed to put the first encounter on top. I don't know. Okay, so draw a card from the gray until you draw one. Okay, I think I'm going to do it like that. I'm a little bit, a lot of bit freaked out about time right now. And so I think what we're going to do is we've got to go search this area. So I'm going to spend an energy to move here. And then we're going to spend another energy to explore that place. Okay, location 106, four dweller mounds. If you have the winds of weirdness status, remove this location from the game and replace it with location 123. Otherwise, read on because I don't have that yet. The miscovered mounds resonate with the sound of spades and pickaxes. Once, only insane treasure hunters worked here. But as more and more gold emerged from under the earth, these burial grounds turned into a regular mine, or at least almost regular. People still disappear and go mad here on occasion. We can wander deep into the mounds, chat with the miners, or leave. Man, I don't know. We're here because we were told in that dream that we needed to be here and gather stuff. To me, that's implying, I don't know. I don't know if we search in the mounds or if we go talk to the miners. My instinct is saying go talk to the miners, but I don't know for sure. Okay, let's go read verse 2. And it says, You stop and listen to a miner's tale. They say a young foreman's apprentice once met a pale, sad girl between the mounds, and she ran from him without a single word. Over the following weeks, he kept slipping away from his work to wander between the mounds looking for her. He finally saw her two more times, but never managed to catch on. Finally, one day, he noticed the girl rummaging into an open four-dweller mound. He followed her. 
The place was dark and teeming with strange powers. The apprentice kept pushing onward, even as voices taunted him and laughed. Finally, after hours of fruitless search, he emerged from the exit, only to discover his body and posture had changed. He was now a young, pale girl. Before she was able to overcome the shock of this discovery, a gruff foreman's apprentice spotted her. Shocked and ashamed, she ran away and wandered the mounds for days until she found an open tomb again. This time, there was an empty coffin inside. The girl was so tired, she lay in it and fell asleep. She woke up in a comfortable bed as a six-year-old boy who still shuddered from the intensity of his dream. This dream never left his mind and finally pushed him to leave his village at the age of 15 and sign up as a foreman's apprentice in the mounds. The man who tells you this story has sunken sad eyes full of fear and yearning. You thank him for his time and discreetly move away. If you don't have part two of the burning mystery status, then each party member gains one experience, then gain part two, the burning mystery status. Exploration ends. Okay, I mean, I guess I'm glad I have experience, but I do not know what's going on. I did double check in my journal that I've written because it's been a day since I was recording earlier. Um, and I did remember the hunter's mark was something that could change when we go back to the original location for better or worse, who knows? But that is the thing. Let's see, what did we just barely earn? We just earned, oh, we just earned Burning Mystery 2. Okay. I just, okay. Now I'm very concerned. Let's see, there is a men here that we could maybe activate here. We are gonna run out of time. How does anybody get this done on time? Because I still have to go here and I don't know where that other place is going to be, but my guess is down here. I don't think, hmm, I don't think that's the place of the dead that was being referred to. I mean, I could explore here again. I'm just out of time. All right, so there's a man here, here. We can always for free, I believe, uh, look at it and see how to activate it. Okay, so for this one, the men here requires all characters and the men here writes secret card. Crap, we don't have that. If we did have that, we would pay one energy, two health, two wealth, one food, and put a new man here model. If there aren't enough models, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and again, I can't imagine anybody actually cares how I'm keeping notes off camera, but I'm just trying to share my experience. So what I decided to do is this. Location 101 is home base. It's probably gonna need a lot of pages. So they get this page, and here, this is awkward. And they'll get these pages. And then I'm gonna do 102, three, four, five, six. And this is a list of the actions when you explore and I've chatted with the miners. So if I want to, I can come back and wander the mounds. I'm just so nervous about time. I would love to activate this thing, but I don't have this uh, men here rights secret card. So I have to keep looking. And I don't know if I continue here or what exactly it is that I do because I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's like this time is running out. I have two more energy. Part of me just wants to get back home right now. Oh, wow. Okay. I think I got to go back home for two energy. So that was two. I think I've got to end the day. At some point, I'm going to have to exhaust myself to do stuff. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and end the day. So we're going to eat some food, reset this. I feel like I'm playing it too safe. I mean, I could be, I could be doing extra stuff. Like I could do one more thing and lose a health because maybe I should be doing that because I'm healing as I'm eating. Okay. Well, hmm. Okay. That's something for me to consider. Before I end the day, I'm going to do one more thing here to help and uh, the, the action on the card, you remember I can like help the people to gain a reputation. And his bad news is that that's gonna cost him a health. But as I eat the food, oh no, 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 because then I'm only going up to four. Never mind, I take that all back. I take it all back. Okay, we're fine. I don't know. I know I can't play it safe all the time. I'm gonna lose that way. But I'm worried about my timing here. So now I do have two experience. I could, let's see, let's pull this over. I could get some new cards in my Diplomacy and Combat deck, 
which would probably be great. Maybe I should, uh, but I kind of want to hold off just a little bit longer. Uh, let's talk about experience points uh, for your attribute pairs, because I really feel like I'm going to need some more attribute stuff going on. Uh, essentially, these two are considered an attribute pair. It has two cubes right now. So in order for me to get a third cube, it's going to cost me six experience points up here. Same thing, two here, but there's only one here. So if I wanted to get another practicality or a spirituality, that's going to cost me two experience points. So, uh, oh no, no, not two, sorry. Uh, the second one is four. So I think I want to hold off just a little bit longer. Now we are in our home location with a dream, but let's not, I mean, we've already read that, so I don't need to worry about that, I don't think. At least I've never seen an indication of me needing to reread that at this point. Um, okay, well, I guess what we're gonna do is the scary thing. We're gonna spend an energy, oh, we need to go draw, oh, sorry, new day stuff, all of the new day stuff. This is down to a three. The new random event says it's beautiful weather. Your first travel today costs one less. Ooh, I like that. When drawing a random green encounter, draw two and pick the one with the smaller value. Even the wild animals come out for their, uh, of their dens for a perfect day for a hunt. Oh, that's kind of precious. I mean, it is precious. Well, okay, do I go down this way? This guy's just kind of scaring me. I feel like that should be my last one. Maybe I come down here and at least see where that third card is. Make sure it's not one of these, or do I just go bite the bullet and take care of that? Ah, let's just do it. Okay, so my first travel action is free. And then, when I get here, immediately I need to draw a, a gray encounter when you enter this location once per day. And something I'm not doing a good job at, let me try to do a better job, is reading uh, some of the flavor text here. The wind that caresses the long grass of this desolate highland also carries the smell of burnt flesh. Gross. Uh, the home base says uh, its history is vast as a graveyard, its future as empty as its houses. The Hunter's Grove was in ages past, only the Druids were allowed into the grove for good reason that is now forgotten. And this one over here was uh, with the former masters of the island gone, no one is left to guard their burial treasures, hopefully. Okay, okay. Um, all right, so we're starting here. We need to draw a gray encounter. So like I said, I don't know that I did this right or not, but it is what I did. So our first gray encounter um, is a misshaped vermin. Okay, we are good at that. At the very least, I'm glad I'm getting practice with this very unique combat system. So I'm even kind of trying to do it without the player aid for better or worse. All right, so we draw three cards. This thing needs four damage. I, as far as I can see, it's identical to the other ones, so fun. All right, so we come across this vermin. We've got throw. So throw, in, in theory, should be used second, if anything else. Um, and I'd have to, it says flip over one weapon or shield. Oh, I saw this in the introductory scenario. Flip over one weapon or shield you're using to gain two uh, cubes of damage. Uh, this item is inactive until combat. Well, I don't have a weapon or a shield right now. I chose not to build this shield. A powerful blow. We know that one, but it's going to cost an energy. As much as possible, I'd like to avoid that. Or, ooh, this one. Okay, so when the enemy attacks, you choose the enemy attack, except run away. Uh, and then this means discard the last card in the line after the attack. So we would want to be able to cover that up. Okay, well, but I do have these two yellows, so does it make sense to do something like this? You see what I'm saying? Uh, I would lose an energy. What would that do? I don't have any magic. That would do three damage if I just did this. Three damage, and then this is flip over one weapon or shield. Oh, yeah, yeah. Duh. How about I read that a hundred times? Okay, so that would do three damage, but if I did this one, I would lose an energy. I would lose an energy. Oh, but this can't be played like that because that's not matched up. Darn it. Could go like this though. So if I went like this, I'd get three damage, four damage, and I'm not Oh, I am still losing an energy. 
Hmm, what a puzzle. All right. And if I went this way, I'm trying to see, can I kill it without losing an energy? That one, that way, I would lose, they would lose three, they would lose three there. Hmm, okay. Well, it depends if I want them to take me out or not. <sighs> energy. All right, let's go. Let's just do it straight forward, nice and clean. So first things first, I do need to lose an energy. And then um, I would put a time token on here, but I'm about to cover this up. But that does do three damage to this vermin. And then what was the one? I don't know that it matters which one I play down next. Oh, it does matter because this one didn't work. I have to play this one down because that matches up there. And that does one more damage. And I'm not flipping this over now. But at this point, I can end combat. I did four damage. I think that's done. So I take these cards. Gosh, I really hope that I'm doing this right. Take these cards, shuffle them up. Ah. And now I kind of do want some cool cards. I mean, these cards are fine, but what about the cool cards? And then this goes in the discard pile. Well, it goes to the bottom of the draw pile, if you know what I'm saying. So that'll go there. And now we do need to spend an energy to explore. So we're at location 104, the Charred Conclave, which reads, It doesn't take long to find it. You just have to follow your nose. The remnants of an enormous wicker man, Neil... The remnants of an enormous wicker man kneel at the bottom of a small veil. You were here when it was set alight years ago. The day was wet. The wicker man smoldered but didn't burn. Its victims, dozens of tightly packed druids, are still inside. Their melted faces and charred beards pressed against the bars and looking towards the gray, silent skies. Barely audible, ceaseless whispers seem to fill the air. If you're playing Maggot, or if he's in your party, go to verse 10. Otherwise, choose one. We can either stay a while and listen, dig through the remains, or leave while your sanity is intact. Wow, those options are stellar. Okay. Well, I don't know. Do we stay a while and listen? I feel like that dream, I know I'm supposed to be here, but what the heck am I supposed to be doing? I think I'm going to stay a while and listen, and look okay so we're gonna go to verse one which says you stand there for a while pondering whether this massacre was justified the druids were blamed for the return of the red death but without them the plague kept on while the men here's weakened the whispers in the wind become louder with every minute there's still some form of life in this in the burnt out husks you wonder what knowledge uh, or madness they can bestow we can learn from the conclave, pay one energy per party member to go to verse 10, or we can leave. Oh, man, I guess we learned from the conclave. So let's pay an energy. Oh, at least home is close. Okay, so verse 10 says, The lipless mouths sneer at you. The melted fingers seem to beckon and call you. An angry whisper grows like the sound of the sea. Finally, you realize they want you to come inside. To step behind the charred bars where the black arms and melted fingers may close around you into a place where your life sh uh, should have ended with theirs gosh this sounds um horrible but gosh i do want to go inside i don't have maggot but i need a spirituality which i don't have i mean i don't want to go inside but um that is where like uh, um that's where the dream was beckoning me to go. I had to go explore the the arms. I don't have spirituality though, but I'm gonna need two more experience to get it. That seems like a goal I need to have. Gosh, I'm feeling like, not, I'm not feeling like crap, but I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, put your ears to the bars and gather what you can from here. Uh, I guess, all right, let's try that. We're gonna go to verse five. After a while, you learn to distinguish singular voices in the maddening cacophony of whispers. Several threaten you or throw curses for what your kin have done to their druids. Some cry out in agonizing pain. One describes a secret uh, invocation and a forgotten ritual. 
If you have at least three magic, go to verse seven. I still don't have any magic. Um, each party member gains one magic. Okay. Each party member who has at least one, what's that symbol? Empathy. I do not gain a terror <laughs> for once. Not having empathy has done me some good. All right. So then the exploration ends there. I have gained a magic and I have not gained an empathy. What did I gain? Oh, if I don't have empathy, then I would get terror. So, yep. I just gained a magic. So I've been writing, again, I'm kind of excited about this notebook. Uh, I've decided to add a couple of things. First of all, I've added the names. <laughs> I cannot imagine anyone can read this. I literally just stand here and write. My handwriting's bad anyway, but standing and writing is <laughs> not doing anybody any favors. But um, I really regret, okay, so as I was adding the names, I kind of regret that I didn't go through those mounds. I think I've missed an opportunity there by wandering the mounds because the dream said something was under the mounds. Oh man, I'm regretting this. I feel a little bit desperate. I don't know why. But anyway, uh, so and then I went ahead and listed for location four. So stay and listen or dig through the remains. So as I was writing that action down, I was like, man, I don't want to, but we should dig through the remains. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to spend my last energy-ish to do that. We're going back to explore. And as we, you know, re-explore, we're going to be digging through the remains at verse 2. And it says, you hum a joyful song. Could you imagine Bjor doing that? Probably. You hum a joyful song to drown out the whispers and get to work. Prying apart half-melted bodies is grim and foul work. But you do find some valuables that were locked away with the unfortunate druids. If you don't have part one of the pillager status, gain one random non-companion item and part one of the pillager status. Each party member who has more than one empathy, I do not, uh, gains one. My little heart, like Tom has empathy, but man, this guy does not, and that is working out. Okay, so here we go. I need a non-companion item. Well, that's a companion, and that's not. Okay, so we found, we found a snare. It costs one energy. Toss a dial, so it's like flip one of the coins. I haven't been using the coins because I've been using the die. Uh, toss a dial, and if we get on the grail side, we gain a food, and if we get a skull card, we discard the item. Ooh, that's risky. Okay, so we've got that snare as well, and then we needed, we need part one of the pillager. Okay, oh, is that? No, okay, I thought that was like, Rubbed off. No, we're good. Okay, I am going to end my day here because now I'm wondering if I should be staying in those places for the dreams. But that can't be right because there's so much time. Ah, I'm so. Okay, well, let's try it here. We're here now. We're doing it. So we're going to rest. We get that. We need to eat a food. Oh, we eat a food to raise that. That stuff is still there. And now we're going into the journal to dream while we're at this very scary place. Dream. In your dream, you flee from a rolling wave of darkness, slowly consuming the land behind you. You try to pick your paths carefully, making sure to gather ample provisions along the way and to rekindle any men here you find. I don't have that one card. Okay. Uh, after a while, the wave catches up with you and you swallow. Oh, and swallows you whole. You come back to the start of the dream. This time you flee as fast as you can, as your legs can carry you. But hunger, dead ends, and beasts of this land quickly end your life. Hint, to survive you need to move fast, but not at the cost of, of your resources or survival tracks. Yeah, but what about this men here that's about to go out? As somebody who's played a lot of escape room games, I have to believe that this is supposed to go out, that that's gonna evolve the story, maybe? I hope. Okay, so where are we? We are here, and now we're starting the new day. So this thing is down to a two. It's gonna go down to a one, and then somehow I'll put it at a zero. I guess I'll put it on the 10, and then it'll get removed. Right? Yeah. Okay, so that was that. All right, now before drawing the new quest, which I wanna point out is going to move things along somehow, I do wanna point this thing out here. It, uh, just I needed to remind myself what it is. I need to earn the men here right secret card. Oh yeah, I'm trying to. Okay, uh, so new event. Here we go. Uh, signs and omens. 
You recognize many constellations in the night sky. The twin warriors, the seal and her cub, the wench, and also the cup, which is said to have appeared in the heavens when Arthur claimed the grail. Now it seems that one of the stars on, the, on its edge has turned red, as if the cup was leaking blood. What foul omen is this? Okay, interesting. Your time is running out. Yeah, I know. Uh, the next travel of every character costs one less. Great. Uh, we need to place one additional random event on top of the event and then discard this card. Okay, so that was the discard-ish pile, even though these are also the discard pile. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but let's grab another random event and we put it on top. And I am just kind of freaking out because I do not think I am doing this right. But we're going to continue on. I just don't know. It's making me feeling it's making me feeling very insecure. All right. So I do think I don't know if I just oh, duh. I need to sorry. I am so sorry. When I entered over here, I should have revealed the card. I will annotate that I need to reveal 109. But my guess is that what I need is over here. But we're revealing it. And this is the Island Asylum. Uh, okay, so we could pay one wealth and gain three. Okay. Oh, and I need to read it. It says, The place where humans first set foot on this island is now the departure for their... For... Oh my gosh. It's now the departure point for their sick. Okay. So that goes right there. Now we could come down here and heal, but I really think we've got to open up this location. So my first travel was free. And then I'm going to come down... Here for one energy and that's gonna open up uh, let's see grub wood does it talk about dead uh, some think it was given its name because it fed settlers in dire times others believe it's due to the maggots crawling over its slumping trees uh, well I guess that kind of looks dead ish my only other thought is maybe it's hunters grove that the dream was referring to Let's see, I wrote it down. I did it off camera at one of those moments. Okay, the dream. It's three enigmas hidden under the Isle of the Dead. Well, that's an island. Clenched in the, in, the, in the burned hand. I cannot read my own handwriting. And one buried in the mist-covered mound. Okay, well, let's see. Hidden under the Isle of the Dead. I feel like this can't be the Isle of the Dead. It's a very healing place. You know? And that other thing is dead, but it's not an Isle. Grubwood. That doesn't look great. Hmm. I don't know what else that could be. I just gotta follow my gut, I think. I don't think, geez, huh, I'm not sure. Well, it's now the departure point for their sick. Is this where the dead go? Man, my gut is telling me to go this way, but my brain is saying I need to go back over here. Darn it. Let's do it. I guess we'll go with my head. As far as I know, there's no hint system here. <laughs> okay, but that was a movement. Now let's do explore this place. So I just wanted you to take a quick look here again before we actually look in the book. Oh, what's that? I just, is this seventh continenty at all? Is there gonna be hidden stuff in here? It definitely has amazing, beautiful art. All right, let's go in the book. Okay, location 109, Island Asylum. The waves splash against the hull of the boat. A silent hooded man slowly ferries you to a secluded island. It's dark willow grove overlooked on three sides by an ancient necropolis carved into the side of the mountain. You know the sick are kept in deep, dark holds, yet you still feel uneasy stepping down into this, onto the shore. Grim monks, the keepers of this place, inspect your body despite your objections. Only then do they agree to listen to you. If you have secret card 66, I don't have any secret cards, then go to verse 9. If you have the tracker status and a dial representing the bow maiden, go to verse 11. Nope. Um, otherwise, choose from the following. Hire yourself an assistant, tour the island's monuments, 
sneak into the forbidden depths of the asylum and leave. Well, let's see, the clue was under the Isle of the Dead. So we're gonna sneak into the forbidden depths. Ah, I'm scared. Verse five. Okay, roll a die, add one for each point of practicality and aggression, then check the total result. Okay, so I have one practicality, two aggression, so that's three plus whatever it is that I roll. A two, so that's five. And five says, you managed to get into the deep halls unnoticed. Go to verse three. Ooh, I'm a little scared. Okay, verse three. If you have part five of the dream and prophecy status, go to verse eight. Otherwise, read on. I don't have that. Okay, so um, Archdruid Wormtoe is in one of the deepest cells, desperately sustaining himself with magic. The last strips of skin left on his body resemble the scales of a half-scrubbed fish. His mind, however, seems in good shape. It doesn't take long for him to recognize you're an outsider. He takes a long, hard look at you. If you're playing maggot, man, nobody's playing maggot. If he's in your party, or if you have fewer than one magic, you're unworthy of a single word. The druid fumes. Get out of here. Exploration ends. Otherwise, go to verse 2. Okay, thankfully I do have one magic. So verse two says, listen to me, the druid says, we should let you all die for what you did to us, ungrateful filth. But the knowledge of the circle can't die with me. You have to listen, you have to remember. Each party member gains two experience, gain secret card 11. If you don't have it yet, gain part five of the dreams and prophecies status. And then, congratulations, you've completed your first quest. Oh, did I? Oh, hold on, before we keep reading, let's, I guess, find secret card 11. I did not mean to jump ahead. That was, I'm excited to be congratulated though. Okay, yay, we got the men here right, so that does make me actually, I have the biggest smile on my face. I legit, as you heard, because I said it a hundred times, did not think I knew what was going on. You can now activate men here's. The cost of this action can be found at the back of each location with a men here symbol. Yay! Okay, um, cool. So what we're gonna do is we keep this somewhere very exciting, right there. We need the dreams and prophecy, prophecies, <laughs> number five. Okay. And now let's go congratulate ourselves. Congratulations, you've completed your first quest. You now know how to wake the ancient men here. When you finish a quest, make sure you always follow the instructions in the success section of your quest card. And then we have a new task, get to a location with a men here icon and activate its men here before your time runs out. Okay, okay, I'll do it. Um, but first I do need to get my two experience that I totally forgot to get myself and I'm excited to have it because I really do want another spirituality. I almost want to avoid empathy for a while because not having that has been very beneficial. And let's see, we have a success. As soon as you have a men here rights, uh, as soon as you have men here rights, resolve the chapter one, part five card from the event deck and discard this card. Remember not to change the structure of the rest of the deck. So I need to come in here. We're taking out part five. And let's see, this says, oh, we already know that hint. Okay, I just get nervous that I've missed something. Okay, we have a new one. A journey begins. Place this card on top of the active quest pile. Um, okay, do I discard this? Maybe not. Oh, and discard this card. Okay, so active quests are gonna go right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what am I doing? Despite your best efforts to learn and perform the ancient rite, the men here in your town seems beyond your help. Wait a second. Did I jump ahead? Let's see. The quest, earn a man here, write secret card to do so. Okay, I did that. I have success. Okay, I feel like I'm off here. All right, despite your best efforts to learn and perform the ancient rite, but I haven't tried that. That's why I'm saying this. The men here in your town seems beyond help. Disheartened, you realize your only hope is to try to enable one of the two statues from nearby locations. Okay, like I said, I do feel like I drew this out of turn for some reason. Activate a man here in one of the nearby locations, Four Dweller Mounds 106 or the Whitening 107. Well, we are already at the mounds, so I kind of want to go back to the mounds. 
And I do have one energy left. So I do think I will use that energy. Oh no, I did make a mistake before. I will annotate this. I couldn't have traveled this way because there was no arrow. Sorry, mistake, we're learning. So I am gonna spend my energy to go up here. Um, I do think this is a new day, probably. Is this a new day? I think so. Which means that I do need to uh, do a gray encounter. So gray encounters. All right, a band of highwaymen. This is eight. They are a robber. I'm gonna have to figure out what that is. Unskilled yet eager to claim your property. Okay, we're gonna look up that term in just a second, but this is gonna be combat and a more complicated one than I'm used to. So let's put this over here. Okay, we're gonna draw three. Oh, let's check what robber means. I gotta look at my glossary here. Enemy traits, robber. When all characters drop to one or less, they lose all wealth and discard all items, then the encounter ends. Okay, so nothing at the beginning. I thought maybe I was gonna lose something right there at the beginning. Okay, so we have this, reposition. It lets us go again and kind of loads those things up. If you escape from combat, ignore the opportunity attack. Okay, powerful blow. I keep drawing that. I wonder how many of those there are. I have no idea. I should, that's four, okay. And then we have a uh, hold guard. Okay. Um, okay, so hold guard. All right, so it seems as though, oh man, if I lose an energy though, I'm gonna be exhausted and take a wound, but these guys are at eight, which is not fantastic. But I could. Yeah, I don't love these cards that I've got. Hmm. If I played that one. But if I keep that one, I can get two more wounds next turn. I almost just want to play that and leave it alone. Okay. I do think that's what I'm going to do. Oh, man, it sucks. I'm going to take an exhaustion. So we're doing this, and when I get exhausted, I take a wound. But let's see, we need to put a timer on here. And then they got three damage. Oops. Okay, now let's see. I think, can I do, I just don't want them to lose two. They're three damage, they're gonna lose two of those cubes unless I can get one more damage on there, but I can't, dang it, I can't get another damage on there. Well, darn. Okay, so I'm gonna end my turn. So now they're taking their turn, and since they have three cubes, they're gonna do two wounds to me, but I'm gonna prevent one of them, and then they're gonna lose two cubes. So I'll take one more damage. Okay, so now uh, it's our turn again. And wait, what do I do? Oh, we needed to discard down and then draw a card, right? Right, I do believe. Okay, so let's see, we go ahead and activate this thing here, which is gonna get them two cubes, right? I think so. And next, so we need to get to eight. Whew, okay, I guess I play this one. I don't know, let's, let's tinker with it. This one, they're gonna do an additional damage to us. Okay, so we would do two, if I did this one, uh, here, I'll keep them separated. We would do two damage. One here, one here, because I do have two aggression. Right, yeah, that's gonna be a hard thing to remember. And if I keep this showing, they're gonna do an additional wound to me, but I'm gonna also be able to draw another card. That puts us at five. At least they'd only heal one though. But they could run away. But I guess I don't have to worry about that because I can't do any other damage. So I think I'm stopping there. So they're at five damage now. I mean, is there, hold on, let me think. Is there a reason for me to cover this up? I do like the ability to draw a card. Let's see, this says, you choose the enemy attack except the run away, but then you would have to discard this card, I think that, yeah, because this would be the, the rightmost card, so we discard that one afterwards if they attack. 
How would that, oh, but I do like the times two. Okay, wait, oh, but I can't do that anyway because I don't have any magic. I gotta stop thinking about that, okay. I could put this one down. If you escape from combat, to reposition myself, it would stop the extra wound, but that's gonna be prevented by my armor anyway, and that lets me draw a card. Okay, I think I'm gonna hold off here. So I do need a time token there and then they're going to attack so they've got five cubes of attack so they're going to do one damage to me plus another one but i'm going to prevent one and then they're going to lose one cube okay so i'm taking another damage okay that's not great i need to draw a card to end the turn right yes and then we're going to start the new turn what did i get well this will let me draw a card well that's good oh except that's not going to match up Thing. Okay, so this one's gonna let me draw another card though. Okay, okay, prevent two, draw one. But I gotta do, I'd have to do four damage, which I definitely cannot do. There's nothing here showing that that's gonna be a possibility. So, let's see. What would happen if I played this one? So that I could have all of those icons, because like, before, that didn't do too much. Neither did that. But if I play this one, then I can't play that one because that doesn't have the yellow icon on it. But it would do three damage next turn. Hmm. if I keep that on the top. So that would do one damage now, but then if they give me any wounds, which they will, then I'd lose this and I won't get the three cards. Woo, this is, this is tough thinking. So let me think, if I put this one down, that's another cube. I don't know where to put that so I don't get them mixed up. If I put that down, it's another cube. If I put this down, I keep going and I cover that, which sucks because it's covering the gain three, but that's not going to happen anyway. So I put this down in order to prevent two damage. Okay, wow, but well, there's no way for me to play that one next because it doesn't have the yellow. Wow, man, my brain is melting. I like that being shown though, to defend. Okay, so let's do that. We're going to stop that there. Put a time token on there. Okay, so now they have five. I'm going to prevent one, two of their damage, which is exciting. They're only going to do one, and then they're going to lose a cube. And then this is going to let me draw a card. Oh, and I need to draw a card to end the round. Draw that one. Wow, okay. This would do four damage, though. Right? I'd lose another energy. Ah! Okay, can I do four damage any other way? I feel like I just need to do that. I'm already exhausted, right? Okay, what would that do? That would do three more damage. Toss a dial. If I get a skull, they would do two more. If I get a grail, I'd gain two. Oh, dear. At least I wouldn't lose another energy. I'm going to need energy to get back. Oh man, time's running out. But this would kill him. Ah, that's so risky. This would automatically do it, but I'm going to lose an energy. But it would just do it. Blah! Do I toss the dial or not? I have the worst luck. Well... I think I'm going to lose an energy. Oh yeah. It's just too risky. I don't trust myself. We're going like this. So I'm going to have to lose an energy. Uh, let's do that now. Sorry, I just never know if I should do these things on. Maybe I should just put these up here. I keep not deciding. I'm going to think about that for later. Okay, so I am going to lose an energy. My understanding is I'm already exhausted, so I don't drop one more health. But that's going to be a total of four more damage which as we do a victory check is going to end it and that's going to give me a reward of one rep 
and I just had to double check. So reward, every player gets that if you're in a party, and the loot you would have to share. But I get it all. I get it all. So we gained one reputation and two wealth. Very exciting. And here, while we're here, so we discard all of these cards. I am going to want better cards here soon. Okay, something like that here. We'll cut once for luck. And then let's get these guys back to where they came from, the little poop heads. And now we have to end the day. So ending the day, we're going to go ahead and eat a food. We only go up four because we were exhausted. This does go up one and our terror, oops, would go down one, but not like that. All right. New day. It seems like they're telling me that I don't like that one. And I don't know why I moved, but this is going to go down to a one. Um, that's just what my understanding from the quest card, that this is going to be a lost thing. And that's going to bring us to a new event. Good weather. Your first travel today costs one less. Good, because I do not have hardly any energy to do anything. So free travel once. I guess one, two. I have two more energy, essentially. Maybe I go up here, one, two, in order to prepare the men here. I think I want to go this way. That way scares me. This way seemed nice. Yeah, I think, I think I will do that. So one, two. And okay, do I really need or want spirituality? That's the real question. Uh, and it's a loaded question too. I think if I'm going to have any success, I think Here's what it is. I was at that wicker place. I've been kind of a butt. I still don't really have empathy, but there was a spiritual awakening at that wicker place. So as we end the day, so I'm gonna go ahead and eat the food, raise this up to the top. That goes up one, that goes down one. Uh, I am gonna spend my four experience points in order to get a spirituality. I don't know that it matters, I wonder why that's pointing up and why that's pointing over. I'm not sure. I guess we'll start at the bottom. It may have said in the rule book, but that's a big rule book, so I'm not totally sure. All right, so this is where I was ending my day, and now we are starting. Oh, no. oh okay, starting the new day. So this thing goes to zero. I'm going to put it at 10. Okay, so this will be removed, losing other locations, because I'm going to activate this men here, here. So this is going to be removed. And that'll be like that. Okay. Yep. I'm with you. All right. So what we needed to do was while we were here, we were going to observe the men here. Oh no, I can't. I don't have the food. I need food. Ah, I forgot. I need a food. Gosh, darn it. I forgot. I need a food. Okay. If I go here, that's one, two, three, four. Assuming I don't lose, I think I have one energy to lose, and I don't think, no, it is going to cost an energy to activate them in here. So I cannot play anything that's going to ruin, I can't play anything that's going to suck up my energy. Oh man, I'm so mad at myself. Ah, okay, that's okay. We're learning and we're growing. So that's one energy, then two more energy to gather food, and it'll probably be worth it to get exhausted if we need to. So one energy, two, and then we gain two food and then we draw a green encounter okay a pack of strays when a faraway village dies out a pack of stray dogs often become the last uh, reminder of its existence this is a horde i don't know what that means let's try something different with this combat let's try it up here uh, it's a little far that's okay we can zoom in Okay, so I don't know what Horde does, and I'm all of a sudden mad at myself because I have a snare. I'm putting myself at a lot of risk for no reason. I'm learning. All right, so what does Horde do? Oh, that's the wrong card. Horde. During step three of the enemy attack, the active character discards two combat cards from the top of their combat deck. Okay, uh, I guess they're just going to burn through that combat deck is the idea, I guess. All right, so we're going to try it up here. Um, start by drawing three cards. If we receive any wounds, which there's a good chance we will, but then we get three. Oh man, how do you not receive wounds and keep this up top? I guess we'd have to get them to four. 
All right. So that would do two. Hmm. All right. This is, once again, it's a little bit tricky. Okay. Well, this would do a one damage, but then we would lose that. We're going to lose that. One damage, we would take one wound, and I'm not going to be able to prevent it. Hmm. Okay, well, we're going to start here. It's going to be two wounds. Oh, two wounds. And that's not good. So I'm going to cover that up with this. You choose the enemy attack except run away, but then we'd have to lose this. Oh, but I don't want to lose that. I like that. But I want to cover that up. We're going to do a bunch of damage. Okay, well, I think we're going to have to play this one down. Oh, I can't because I don't have... Oh, I do have a magic. Do I spend my magic? Do I need the magic? I don't need the magic for the men here, not this one. Okay, so I am going to spend the magic so that I can play that. That's going to let me choose which enemy attack that we do. And then, after the attack, we need to discard this card. Not stellar to discard that card, but it's something. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So, now it's the enemy's attack. We're going to choose the one wound attack here, just so I don't do two. Well, I could prevent one, but then they lose a cube. Okay, yeah, I'm going to do the one attack. I'm going to take the damage. And then, I need to discard this card. I guess discards will be right there. All right, so now that's showing, and now it's our turn again. So now we get to draw a new card. And how do I want to do this? What a waste. What a waste. If we don't play a card, then there's an opportunity attack. We would gain a terror. But I need more cards. So I could play this down to do one more attack. That would be two, and then it would lose that. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, we're going to do this one to do one more wound. Not great. And then I need to cover that one up because I don't want that to happen. And I can cover it with that. Like this. Now, with that's the end of mine. I'm all out of cards. Not great. Uh, with three, they're going to do two damage. I'll prevent one of them. And then they would discard this card. But at least they still have three. I need to get to five. It depends on what I draw. All right, so now I'm drawing this. Oh. Okay, I am going to have to do it, though. So I'm playing this thing down. And that's going to be enough to take them out, which will get me a food. That's good. And then, but I do need to lose an energy, which is not good. And yeah, but that was, that was four more on them. They got super deaded. Yeah, all right. So that was that combat. So then we've got these here, and um, I'm just gonna toss this over there. And then um, I'll, we'll fix that in a second. Okay, so then that was the end of combat. We got the food. So we're going to shuffle these up a little bit. Like that. And we are, this thing, it's like a flicker, like the tiniest flicker. It's getting super dark. We're running over here. That's going to get us exhausted, and we're going to lose that. And, uh, and then we, we're going to observe the men here which remember that means we need to pay an energy which we do have we're exhausted but we're doing it we're paying a health um, for this men here we need to lose two wealth and pay one food and when we do that we're going to bring in a new men here set the dial to eight so this is now activated here i'll put it up here all right so that thing is now activated and that's gonna bring us to the end of the day. Um, so for the end of the day, we need to eat a food, 
to move us up four. We need to heal ourselves one. I don't think I've really gained any terror that I can remember, but I feel like that's a little off. And I still have my snare. For better or worse, I need to remember that I have that. Okay, we have decided to go on this path instead of that path, which really freaks me out. We're removing this dial. And now these are the only locations that are available. These are all in the dark. But with this lit up, I guess, I didn't think about this. Now that that's lit up, we need to see locations 116 and 112. And I'm not 100% sure what order I should be doing this in, but let's get these locations revealed. And what I'm referring to is that we completed this, oh, this encounter was completed, so. I just had tossed it. We completed this quest. Success, when you activate one of these men here, resolve the chapter one, part six card from the event deck and discard this card. Okay. So, event. Congratulations. You've completed your first chapter of the Fall of Avalon campaign. Oh man, I thought I was gonna have to do a whole other video. Uh, each character gains two experience and one magic. Okay, let's, uh, let's bring this down. Let's see, two experience, one magic. And uh, each character gains one free combat deck advancement. Oh, that's very exciting. Well, while we're over here in the box, revealed locations. These are the ones that I am uh, cleaning up. I feel like I have too many, but they're right. Okay, so I'm gonna put the revealed locations here under this tab. Okay, I had just set them aside for now. Uh, and then we get a combat advancement. Is that right? Let me read. What was it? Get one free combat advancement. See that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we have a combat advancement. And rage. It looks exciting. When they go down, you lose an energy. Gain one cube for each. Oh, of that icon that I have. Or does that need to be completed? Oh, that looks like a completed connection. Okay. Probably in the ones before it. I don't know. We'll learn. So I guess that just goes in here and probably gets shuffled. Fold, I would guess. I'm gonna shuffle it. I guess I can get it out if I'm wrong. I'll I'll check the rules in a second. I'm just on a roll right now, so I don't want to mess up, you know. Okay, what else are we doing? Uh, it says discard your event deck. Place any discarded random event cards back in the random event deck and shuffle this deck. Then either save your game or draw a chapter two set of card and follow its instructions to begin the next chapter. Do you know what? I think we are just going to call that good. So uh, essentially my plan is you have a save sheet in which you can write notes, but I'm keeping my book. You can write down where the men here is and what the die value should be. And um, I don't know how this works with the day. I think we just continue on with the day, right? Name. It doesn't have anywhere to annotate that you have taken your turn so I'm not sure how that works I'm gonna have to do some research um, yeah but anyway I'm just gonna snap a picture I imagine or maybe I'll write stuff down who knows and then we have this stuff here no locations were removed they're just revealed so yeah okay I guess that's that I don't think I need to really clean this up on camera this has been a pretty long and kind of exciting video as it is. So we are gonna end chapter one right there. I'll do a little bit of research about what happens with respect to the day issue. I guess technically I had ended, the day ended, like I lost my last thing when the quest was over. So essentially I would be beginning a new day or something like that, I'll figure it out. I technically started a new day here or no, I guess that's the end of the day. I ended the day, we will begin the day. I'm gonna stop talking about something I don't know about. I need to go read and I don't wanna do it on camera. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Not exactly sure when the next chapter of Tainted Grail is gonna come on up. I am also playing um, Aeon's End Legacy and Gloomhaven, and so I wanna make sure that I am being smart and wise with all of those decisions, but yeah, that was fun. There you go, that was chapter one of Tainted Grail. Obviously, if you caught things that I, I did wrong, please let me know in the nicest way possible. Happy to acknowledge my mistakes. I just want it to be uh, told to me in a kind way that makes me want to continue. And with that, I'm going to sign off and go start editing. I have a lot of stuff to edit. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.